All right, so Soleil added a brand new feature, the report system, but unfortunately, there's no explanation on how it works. I know I wasn't alone in trying to figure out how to report someone. So today in this video, I'll break down how to report cheaters as well as how to recognize them because hackers come in all shapes and sizes. I'll also be giving my tips on the best things you can do when you come across a hacker in your match. All right, now that we have the video index, make sure you drop a like if you find this video helpful and subscribe for more Shinobi Striker content. Bet. When you finish a match, you'll notice at the bottom of the screen you'll have a prompt to report a player. For my console, it's the triangle button. Once you press this button, a list of all the players' names will pop up. To report a player, you have to scroll down to their name and press X, or whatever button it is for your console. If you were like me, I would keep pressing X and wonder if it reported them or not. However, that's not how it's done. Once you select a player, scroll all the way down until your highlighter goes over the send indicator. Press X again, and it will ask if you want to confirm this. After that, leave the post-match results screen as usual. Once you are in the lobby, you will get another window pop-up asking you what the player you reported did. You'll notice there are several options, including non-hacker related ones like idle players or inappropriate names. After selecting the applicable offenses, press send and let the attack mains at Soleil deal with the rest. Unfortunately, there is no surefire way to know how long it will take for them to take action. But on the bright side, I haven't seen any hackers I've reported the following days. In fact, it seems like there are less hackers altogether, so I can comfortably say that these fixes are having a positive effect. So shout out to Slay, man, they really turned things around in Season 5. With that being said, let's move on to the next order of business. How do you recognize if someone is cheating? Well, let's first establish that there are three kinds of cheating. The first, using ninja tools or ninjutsu outside of their assigned role. I call this the level 1 hack because they are typically a lot easier to fight against. However, it is still an easier said than done task. To recognize level 1 hackers, it takes a little bit of game knowledge to know what ninjutsu weapons or ninja tools can be used on which types. Still, keep an eye out for those hacks because they will always lead into level 2 cheats. For level 2 hacking, we have the non cooldown cheating. So this will be the spamming of secret techniques like Feather Illusion, Totsuka Blade, Izanami, etc. While some level 2 hacks can be fought against, many of them aren't worth the effort and should be avoided, which I'll discuss later in the video. With level 2 hacks, the outright obvious spamming of secret techniques is a dead giveaway, but another indicator is if you see the player activate a ninjutsu with an animation that is not attached to that jutsu, the most popular being in Sekjami technique. However, you can also see hackers use Super Shark Bomb and Giant Flame Bomb as an animation to hack. Lastly, for level 2 cheaters, they can also place regular ninjutsu in their secret technique slot, allowing them to spam that ninjutsu. The most popular is Sharingan, as the enemy will appear to have infinite substitutions. These type of hacks are indicated by a red secret technique activation aura. You have to be hyper aware when playing with or against level 2 hacks because even though they can be obvious, they can be subtle as well. So if the enemy or you are constantly getting health back, substitutions back, or ninjutsu back, recognize that there is someone cheating in the match. And finally, we have the level 3 hacks. These are the made up stuff, moves that aren't in the game, that are created by these cheaters. They'll be able to one shot you and take your full sacred technique gauge. They'll be able to fly around invincible, spamming crimson stars. They have an aura around them that drains your substitution, ninjutsu and secret technique gauge. Wear a suit of needle jizo. Hell, they even have cast characters with invincibility and paper bomb kunai for heavy attacks. Level 3 hacks are for the real low lives, but they are typically easy to spot. Just be aware that if you are getting healed by a mod or a cast character or they have paper bomb kunais, that isn't a noob choosing a VR master but a noob who's cheating out the ass. So now that we know how to identify a cheater, let's talk strategy on how to deal with them. First, if they are on your team, the honorable thing to do is to not help them. You don't want to sit idle in case the hacker has the audacity to report you, but you don't have to help them. You can even go as far as to sabotage them like suicide in a pitfall during combat battle or helping the enemy team take your flag. When playing against hacks, you can always fight them with your most meta loadout. The levels are an indicator of how difficult they will be to fight, though some level 2 hacks like Infinite Tsukuyomi or Izanami are impossible to deal with. Your best bet is to not fight them though, as these punks are likely to get off by watching you struggle to beat them. So your next best option is to sit in the respawn screen by pressing to change the loadout but not picking one. This will kill time and preserve your KD. However, if you don't care about your stats, you can always just pitfall yourself and end the match faster to get to reporting them. 
Like I said earlier, big shout out to Soleil for taking a major step in the right direction. The game isn't in a good spot right now, but I can say with confidence that it is getting better as the updates continue to improve the quality of the game. Please drop any questions you have about hacking down in the comment section below and leave a like on the video if you found it useful. I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Peace.